every time the consultations with the state governments kept happening and in this phase the opportunity that the Indian economy gives even though there were challenges not to lose heart but carry on with the reforms which are so required in the economy reforms to make lives better reforms to make system transparent reforms to make businesses do it easily rather than go 10,000 places and give their forms and say please give me the permit please give me the license give me this and where possible to make it as deemed as given if it exceeds a certain time you wait for 15 days 30 days as is the case in each of them and if you don't get it in time we even made this provision it can be taken as given so the reforms opportunity was not lost because everybody was tied up in the COVID, everybody was tied up in the revival of the economy, everybody was tied up in making sure that they don't get hit by the COVID or by the war. And again in this, even when the fertilizer prices, I told you how it, the fertilizer things have become stressed because of the war. And when the prices hit, seven eight times more than what we give in india in the market we still imported them at that seven eight times higher price but never passed that burden on the farmers the farmers were paying the same amount the same amount as before but imported fertilizers are very very high uh, the number the total quantity that we import is very high and every import without restriction was made and given to the farmers without they having to bear the burden of increasing cost. So, Indian economy is fast growing. Our entrepreneurs showed their courage, their enterprise. They were able to pull through the crisis. All credit to our 1.4 billion population. Really. The government may support, the government may come forward. We have a very visionary Prime Minister who monitors, as I said, vaccine onwards to the price of imported commodities and get the fuel from where you should and where you should means where you can afford to bring it from. Initially, everybody was asking, are you importing from Russia? Are you getting it from Russia? Because it's giving in concession. For me, the question is, we need to get it at an affordable price. My search will be constantly on to see where I can get it at an affordable price for the Indians. And we explained our position. Not that we are answerable as a sovereign country to anybody else except our people. We are answerable to our people. So we made sure that India will get the quantities of fuel required at the affordable price. So I am just giving all this only to say India today is being observed by the global community for the way in which it steered the way, steered its own way through the pandemic, through the war and war related price pillowers. Inflation in India is, if I can say, in a very generic sweeping fashion inflation in India is today largely imported because of the price of fuel price of fertilizer so you're bringing it all in your own cost for inflation could be supply side tomatoes are not adequately available in the market or the production of a particular crop is damaged because of flood or unseasonal rains that inflation India always is aware of every government will fight that we are doing that as well. But today, the pressures on inflation in India are largely because of the imported hikes in prices. So in all this, if Prime Minister Modi has ensured that the people of India will not be put to suffering, and where we can help, extent to which we can help, we will definitely do. There, they, in, a, in an unusual situation like COVID, yes, there will always be the 
a voice which will say, no, no, this wasn't all right, it could have been different. I agreed. But was there a template before any one of us to say a certain situation because of a global pandemic, you will handle like this? No. Every day with consultation, we were taking it forward. And therefore, without uh, making my opening remarks too large or too time-consuming, India and as Indians, we can be extremely proud that our people have all come together and showed their entrepreneurship, showed their hand-holding one another. And as a result, we are able to come up to this level. And in this, as I said in the first, at the very beginning, the three chapters which I am presenting before you are the glo global recognition of India, giving India the high table, a place at the high table for all these achievements and more. And then within India, the way in which things are being handled and that in consultation with states. I can tell you about the 2020 year when GST collections had really suffered. That year by borrowing back to back in the GST council sitting and deciding with the ministers from the states. We had given timely Borrowed, but borrowed money, but timely release happened on predictable dates. No state was left without timely dispersal of revenue, of money which was borrowed. So the consultation with the states helped. And after that as well, when the revenue grew, we paid them in advance. Sometimes what I have to pay two months afterwards, I paid earlier. I gave two installments at one time only because states are at the ground, meaning that's where action lies. They are the, at the coal face, as they say. They need money in their hands. They need to spend. So there was no center is sitting over money, no such a situation. The moment it came, and if it came adequately, we pushed it to the states to say, you take two months worth even within one month. So the consultation with the states and recognizing the federal nature of our country has been 100% followed by Prime Minister Modi. He's been a chief minister himself, so he knows what it is to recognize the role of states and give them their due in time. So my second and the third chapter also has enough features which I can elaborate. But for now, for my opening statement, I want to submit that Karnataka and its people are very educated. They are in every walk of life. They quietly contribute to the nation building. There's no hullabaloo about it. The state has its gentle people. I recognize that. And therefore, you have seen also what has happened, the way in which Bengaluru as a city has got itself built with enterprising youth. Today, the policy of the state government is also helping to expand that to other parts of the state, Mangaluru for startups and other places also. The corridor goes to Tumkuru, not just from Chennai to Bengaluru, it goes further there. North Karnataka has received, Kalyana Karnataka has received the due attention of the central government and every project there has been given due priority. Today is a very important day for Karnataka. We all very respectfully remember the role several centuries ago played by uh, Guru Basavanna. The Basavanna Mantapa it is the central government which is also working together to build it and refresh it and give it its due recognition. So Karnataka and its role, particularly in the international Sri Anna millets, Karnataka leads the way. 
the farmers of Kalyan Karnataka have always succeeded in producing several varieties of Sri Anna. And the focus given in the year, International Year of Millets, I remember coming to uh, the Agricultural University in uh, Raichur and kick-starting this whole thing last year. Awards and also challenges have been given for startups. They are being given support money in crores because we want this strength of Karnataka also to be brought out and recognized duly. So, with all this said, I'll uh, end my opening statement and thanking all of you all for having come here to listen to me.